explain the background. Uh, I was born in New Zealand, so I'm a Kiwi. Uh, went to England when I was nine. Didn't have any choice. My parents went there, so I had to go with them. And went through the schooling system in the UK. Um, I was going to be an accountant. Go with numbers. I do not remember names, so do not tell me your name. I will not remember. <laughs> um, a friend of mine um, used to play for a guy called David Bowie, and he got fired on the day he got married. Uh, David didn't like his wife, so I got a phone call. I said, "Can you help me?" Yeah. "What do you want?" "Well, I'm not getting paid. I'm not getting royalties. I'm not getting anything." Well, I don't know anything about the entertainment business, so no. Call me up two weeks later, says you have to. So, at the end of that, I ended up owning a record company, production company, management company, and we became involved with some small acts, uh, George Harrison and Super Trent and people like that, and uh, <laughs> ran a major entertainment company in the UK. We actually produced a second album for Virgin Records. Uh, they didn't release it, so it wasn't really good. Um, and got some many of my acts signed to major labels. Plus, okay. Came over to the US because we were doing a lot of business here. At that time, I was married with two daughters and one on the way. And moved into a small town over here called La Cunada and was working at the 9000 building on Sunset. One day I got home and found that one of my children had had a major accident. Uh, became very involved with Children's Hospital, not willingly, and we looked after our son for seven years uh, before he finally passed away. I decided at that time, when the accident occurred, that entertainment no longer met what I wanted to do. So we started what then eventually became Stay Healthy. So I used the funds, I used what I knew, and decided could we bring entertainment and healthcare together? Initially, the answer was no. We could not. The answer today is yes. Very, very definitely. So, Stay Healthy was started in 1998. This is not a startup. This is not a bunch of young kids who have no experience. We have a lot. We've learned what works and what does not. If you go into Rite Aid or you go into Ralph's, you will see uh, one of our kiosks from the company and foundation in there which is doing blood pressure, body fat, weight. We also develop ways of measuring lung capacity, temperature, and many other things using a kiosk. We built that network. There's 11,000 kiosks all across the country. We do two scannings every second. What we found, and this is what really disappointed us, is we were signing 35,000 new members every month. So they come in, use the chaos, sign up, they wanted to be there. Within three months, that number was down to 3,000. So we had a 90% drop off rate. So even today, we're getting about 300 million scans that we've done. We can do a lot of population health analysis. We can see right now what the hypertensive crisis is across the country, and we know where it is, we know the age groups, we know the gender. But it doesn't work. So I said, okay, what do we need to do? What's the problem? And the problem comes down to two things. One is education. If people are educated, healthcare costs go down. Starting with children. Okay? How many of you have gone to school and seen overweight children? We have to. What is the biggest health problem in crisis in this country today? Obesity, diabetes. Obesity. <laughs> Let me give you some stats. And we'll get into this in a minute. 30% of all cancers are caused by excess body fat. Up to 70% of breast cancer is caused by excess body fat. Wow. 80% of type 2 diabetes is caused by excess body fat. Yeah. Is there a disease out there that in some way is not sourced by excess fat? The answer is probably not. So you'll see that the excess fat problem, which when we started staying healthy was 58% of the population is now 70%. So let's look at some numbers and we'll start the slides. Our chairman is Governor Tony Thompson. 
and he stated one fact. The biggest <coughs> terrorist threat in this country is not terrorist. It's excess fat. Okay? Our chairman is government time to time. Look at these numbers, these are pretty scary. 15 million, 198,000 people in the US have cancer being treated today. If you take the numbers of those who have had treatment, those numbers double. 14 million people worldwide have cancer. And these are the latest numbers from the CDC this year. So we're not going back you know, five or 10 years. One in six people die of cancer worldwide. In this country. In this country as well, yeah. <laughs> 29 million people have diabetes in the US. 18 million know it. So just think about that number, okay? 100 million have diabetes or are pre-diabetic. That's over a third of our population. Think about that number, it's, it's, it's really scary. Up to 30% are already gone through these stats. Let's go to the next one. Uh, another statement made by Governor Thompson. It is highly likely that the current generations of children being born today will not reach the same age as their parents unless we reverse the trends. Mm -hmm. So just think about that. What's our average age? It was 85, it's coming down. Our children will not reach that age unless we reverse the trend. Also, you know, obviously with that, you know, the costs are rising dramatically. That impacts every single person in this room, okay? If we look at the cost or the healthcare industry, if you want to call that, 8.7 trillion worldwide, of that, 3 trillion is here in the United States. And that number is growing. Okay, we just went into some of this earlier on. We have two problems. Number one, education. How do we train people and educate them? Are they going to read? No. What's the fastest growing segment that we see people doing online or anywhere else? It's video. It's visual. Sitting on your butt. What was that? Sitting Games. on your butt. <laughs> well, it's a fact. <laughs> and, and the other one is engagement. Now, before I go on, I want to ask a question here. We did some focus group work. And how many of you know people who are fat? <laughs> When we did the focus group, I asked that question, how many of you are fat? And over half the room put their hand up. And some of them weren't. Yeah. Some men and women like to look at themselves and go, I'm fat, and just do that every day. I said, okay, what if I was to tell you not? I remember this is 20 years ago. What if I told you you have fat? You may have more than you should have, but you are not fat. If you were, you'd have no bones, you'd have nothing else. And three, three of the women in that room started to cry. They had never differentiated. So how many of you can bully? Everyone. How many of you have given up? Up in the hands. Okay, what do you care about? And they said, well, my skin. Okay. What if I was to tell you that underhydration causes skin breakouts? Never thought about it. If we gave you this piece of equipment, which we had developed at that time, which was a body composition analyzer, which also gave them a hydration ring, would you use it? Everyone said yes. Later we went back and checked with them, every single one. Because what was happening, they're getting the hydration number, and a big number next to it was the body fat percent. Every one of them started losing weight. They couldn't stand seeing the big number, and they were doing hydration properly. It's very difficult to lose fat if you do not hydrate correctly. Okay, let's go to the next slide. We are going to be talking about something that this company is doing with the company called Augmently. Ziggy's, uh, Ziggy's company. Uh, Ziggy uh, is now the president of Stay Healthy. And we're bringing augmented reality and healthcare together in a way that's never been done before. I'm glad many of you are not eating breakfast because some of the stuff you're about to see you won't like. <laughs> okay? Hello, everybody. So, 
real quick just to break down what augment, augmented reality means. So if we break it down just in the words, augment to improve, to enhance, and reality is our real world. So some of the benefits of augmented reality is it causes more of an emotional connection, whether it's with products or your health. Um, by adding a, a layer of video or objects or 3D objects um, or stills into your real world. Um, more importantly, it doesn't require any wearables or headsets such as virtual reality or some of these wearables you're talking about. Um, we're excited about it because the biggest distribution we have now globally is your cell phone and everybody has one of those in their pockets. Um, what we're doing, this is very interesting, is when you hear a lot about augmented reality, it's generally, in the healthcare industry, it's generally um, a B2B play or more in the, um, in the operating room, education for doctors. No one's using augmented reality as a way to uh, engage people with their personal health. And that's something that Stay Healthy is doing. And we're the first to, to do so. So, I don't know if, if any of you really understood exactly what you just saw, there was a room, which would be this room here, and Zini had placed in the room a cartoon version of a heart. Okay? That is a game changer. So what you're about to see is some of the things we can do, but in this case, we created this heart along with seven other major organs, and you'll see those later. There's a heart, liver, kidney, and this is for children. It was requested by Children's Hospital, and we're about to launch a program with them later. Uh, later this month. The idea is a child will color that organ, and when they do, it comes to life. They can then place that anywhere they want. While they're doing it, they're getting health tips. So they're learning about that organ. And Zia will go through it with you you as as we move forward. The next slide is, there's three different channels we've taken. I'll read it here. The main thing that we've looked at, even though we have all these kiosks across the country, is we're not seeing enough people. So as Ziggy said, everyone, and I guarantee everyone in this room has one, has a cell phone. I went down to South Central LA, the equivalent of the Health and Human Services Secretary for California. The children in that room that we were working with were seven up through 17. Every single one had a cell phone. 70% were overweight. Okay? We had to have them put the phones down so they could focus. And actually, on that point, I'll give you all a warning. Uh, we had our granddaughter over recently, it was for ages me, but that's okay. And she just turned 13. And she wanted to have a sleepover. She bought five of her girlfriends with her. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did take their cell phones away, so they actually had to talk to each other, which is amazing. And they did. Their parents texted us later and thanked us for doing it. <laughs> the thing that we're creating is, the background of our company is everything we have done has gone through the FDA. So if you look at our kiosk, it's all gone through 510K, which means we've had to do clinical trials. We've had to submit to the FDA for approval. What we realized is we could take all of the learnings that we have had over the last 20 years, and create an app, and a good example is a body fat analyzer. When we developed the app for the kiosk, we, were, we had access to 6,000 DEXA scans. Does everyone here know what a DEXA scan is? No. One, that's bad, okay. The DEXA scan is dual absorption x-ray. It was created by General Electric and other companies to measure bone porosity in women for postmenopause. They found as a side effect that you could measure very accurately body fat percent. So we went, we had 6,000 scans, we analyzed them, we had 3,000 women, 1,700 children, 1,300 men. We then created the algorithms which are on the kiosk today to just body fat measurement. When we compared our results to DEXA, the gold standard, we were accurate to within 1%. The ones where we had trouble with are very, very heavy and the very, very slim. Okay? So we said, well, can we take those equations and put them on a the cell phone? And the answer was, we can make them better. So we got access to 18,000 DEXA scans. And I will tell you that what's about to be released 
which will be on cell phones and available to everybody, is a more accurate body fat measurement on the cell phone with no <coughs> medical equipment. Okay, is that clear? Body fat's our biggest problem, that's what we're going after first, right? Well, let's, and so in this case, we don't need a 510K. Let's go to the next slide. <laughs> We're making a bold statement. Uh, in the future, our body fat index should replace BMI. Why? Let me give you the real answer. It doesn't work. <laughs> when we took the 6,000 Dexter scans, and we took the numbers that we had, I'm going to ask a question. It'd be interested to see who can answer this. Of the 3,000 women who had the result of their body fat percent, how many have the same number on the BMI? How many do you think? 20%? Two. Zero. 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 Of the 1,700 children, how many had the same number? Zero. Right. So essentially, of the 6,000, there were 13 men that had it. So it was okay on the men. So 30 out of 1,300 had the same number. We looked at this and went, this is ridiculous. So then we looked at 80 published <laughs> research results. Every single one slammed BMI. Do any of you know when it was created? And how? It says 1830s. 1833, <laughs> by a Belgian mathematician who for his clinical study used seven male Canada. Oh, brother. Okay? No <coughs> women, no children. Because in the 1830s, in Belgium, obviously, they didn't care. So they didn't count. As we have moved forward and we've looked at BMI, BMI in particular victimizes women. It gives them a higher result than they should have. So for their insurance, the actuaries and others, is a very, very bad tool. And can anyone name any other medical screening device or technology that's been around since the 1830s? The answer is no. no. It does not exist. So the fact that our insurance companies, our physicians that's used over 100 million times a year are still using it is shocking. So I've got together with Ziggy, and what you're about to see is at least the Body Fact Index supported by Governor Thompson. He's the former Health and Human Services Secretary as well as being the governor. His personal friend is the head of the CDC, the NIH, and the FDA, two of whom used to work for him. So we're going to be making a lot of noise. We are attacking BMI. And one of the main reasons it is victimizing women. Okay? BFI is the first true, innova true innovation in body fat since the 1830s. We stand behind that statement. Already gone through the inaccuracy. The BFI that we're coming out with is 98% accurate and is based on extensive clinical trials. Okay? Now we're looking at the app itself. So what you're going to be able to do is put in information about yourself. Height, age, weight, gender, and race. As you do so, it will do the analysis and give you your body fat percent. We also realize that, let's say that you're 10 pounds overweight. You got 10 pounds fat more than you should have. Does anyone know how many calories it takes to burn one pound of fat? 3,500. 36. <laughs> <laughs> Recently. Okay, when you ask. <laughs> so we, if we look at a person, we say, okay, so to lose 10 pounds of fat, they have to burn 3,600 calories per, ooh, that's 36,000 calories. How are they going to measure that? In the early days of Stay Healthy, we created a product called the RT6, which meant Research Tracker 6. We actually got permission, actually I'm not sure we did, from Motorola to use a pager case, which you wore on your waist, and it became the gold standard in research worldwide. So research institutions from Russia through New Zealand, a good one, Australia and others bought this and are still using it today. We actually sold some more recently. What it did is it actually accessed the accelerometers and the gyroscopes in that product itself, which we built. So we went, well, do your modern phones have accelerometers and gyroscopes? They do. So could we take this highly accurate measurement technology, algorithms and equations, and use them on a the phone? The answer is yes. You'll soon see that coming out. 
is this as accurate as Fitbit? Fitbit's a toy in comparison. So it's using clinical base, and this was FDA cleared. So we're now taking those equations and putting them onto a cell phone. So if you look at what we're doing, we're saying, okay, how many pounds of fat do you have to, use to lose? Set a goal. Let's say it's one pound a week. How are you going to burn and how do you measure 3,600 calories of excess burn? With this app on your phone, which you carry everywhere, you're going to be able to do that. You don't have to wear a watch. You don't have to wear something attached to your waist. You actually have it on your cell phone. Does that make sense? So we're putting it onto something that everyone has already. You don't have to buy anything else. You just have the app. Let's move on. Well, this actually shows the activity tracker in use. Uh, if any of you want to see more about this, you know, we can send you an email or give you information later. But, but again, you'll see the, the, what's happening. You, you're tracking. All these mean something. We actually have a saying in stay healthy. If you, if you can screen it, measure it, if you can track it, you can change it. One reading doesn't mean anything. What means something is generated over time. So how many calories did I burn today? How many am I going to burn tomorrow? What did I do last week? And the alerts come up, and they're kind of fun. It's all done through audio. If you don't make it, you don't want the message. It's nasty. <laughs> but it's also fun, OK? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad he's here. I forget stuff. One, one thing that's important is, th does anyone in the room know what basal metabolic rate is? <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> what is it? it? It's basically the amount of energy that your um, your whole body requires to maintain homeostasis while your body's at rest. And I think it's measured after, was it 12 or 24 hours of complete rest? So you can't engage in exercise or physical activity. It needs to be measured from a resting state. Yeah, but there's... There's various equations and algorithms out there through other people's clinical trials. And essentially what he said is correct. Your body is burning calories whether you're doing anything or not. So it's very important that you know what your basal metabolic rate or BMR is. So in our app, we calculate that based on your profile. We then add to it your activity. So with so many of the apps that are out there, all they measure is activity. It's inaccurate. You need to know the total picture. How many calories is this body burning today? How many will it burn tomorrow? So by going on top of BMR and the activity, you get a real read. Okay? Okay, now it's going to get nasty. One thing we talked about is engagement. Okay? If I gave you a number and I said your body fat percent is 17% as a male, what would you think? If I told you 30%, what would you think? Overweight. Too much fat. Okay. We found that that didn't actually have enough impact. So I talked to Ziggy. I said, well, could we show someone the impact of that body fat on their major organs? What you're about to see is that in augmented reality. So for the first time, we can say to someone, okay, this is your body fat percent. This is what it's doing to your heart, your liver, and your kidneys. The liver is pretty gross. So let's, let's run this. So here you see a heart building and losing fat. Okay, so what we see is the heart itself does have fat around it, particularly when the computer works. <laughs> okay, so here on, the, on, on this one here, you say this is a healthy heart. Here, this is a person who's getting into trouble, and here, they're in serious trouble. Okay, so that means someone who's probably clinically obese. The fact that they now see it related to their body fat percent for the first time is engaging. Everyone we've shown it to has immediately said, I'm going to do something. And I'll tell you, everyone, every one of them has. Okay. Here, these are the kidneys. For those who don't know, those are your adrenals. Healthy kidney, getting into trouble, real trouble. 
This, this dude, the liver, it's funny. <laughs> the liver is the largest solid organ in, in the body. It's not the largest organ, it's the largest solid organ. It does not build up fat around it. What you're going to see is what it does. And it's particularly gross. So this is the liver. What happens is the fat builds up inside the liver. Which means it's increasing in size, increasing in weight, and de decreasing in efficiency. So the liver is important to every one of us. Okay? This is related to the body fat percent. So as you do your BFI, here's your body fat number. Now you can look at these major organs and the impact that fat's having on those for the first time in augmented reality. Something important to note is, that we didn't touch on, it's personalized to your number. So I don't want you guys to think that you get a reading, says you're 30% um, excess body fat, and you're just gonna see this animation that says, you know, it'll get gross. It's actually personalized to your number. So your reading, your heart will look different than yours, and then as it gets, you get healthier or unhealthier, you see that impact. Now this is on a screen, but you're gonna, you're gonna see an actual augmented reality in front of you. It really, it creates an emotional connection when you know it's your heart you're looking at. It's pretty gross, and everybody we show it to, they joke, but they don't. They said, I'm going on a diet immediately, <laughs> because uh, it's, it's quite jarring you know, when, when you think about what's in your body. hand over to uh, Ziggy, um, just a background on what you're about to see. We were approached by Children's Hospital. Uh, they wanted something that could engage the children. Uh, one of those is coloring. Give them health tips and keep them amused while they're waiting to go into radiology or just sitting in the waiting room. So hand this over to Ziggy. His team built this. We're very excited. It's about to come out. So. This color app is, we're actually changing the name, though. Let's call it Magic Color for now. Um, again, what we realize, it starts with education, right? It has to happen. Um, it's, almost, it's almost late sometimes to educate the adults, so we definitely want to hit the schools and the kids first. Uh, and then if they come home and even talk to the parents and start getting concerned about the parents' health on their own, it makes a real impact. So we did some research, and we've seen that coloring is, is an amazing tool. Um, a, it's proven to reduce stress. Adult coloring, by the way, adult coloring books have you seen this boom that's been rising. And there's many coloring apps out there, just 2D regular coloring that are in the tens, 50, 100 million downloads. So we wanted to do for the first time is combine healthcare with coloring and augmented reality for that extra bit of engagement. So what we do is we're creating this game, or a gamified coloring app, where we've created 20 original um, 20, sorry, 20 original fruits and vegetables, all 3D animated, and eight major organs. The kid then gets the first organ, which is the heart. They get to color it in any way they want. They have all kinds of different colors, different brush sizes. Um, then they get to bring it into their real world via augmented reality. But before they do, they get a health tip about the heart. And it's a randomized health, health tip. There's a bunch of them. Then, and it doesn't show it here, when they actually create an augmented reality, the heart will show up the way they colored it. This is our heart, but it would show up the way they colored it. So the kid's very excited about their creation. Um, and then they unlock the next one, which is an apple. They get to color it any way they want. The apple comes to life. They can pose next to the apple. They can put it in the room. They can put it on the shoulder, palm of their hands. So user-generated content becomes very fun for the kid. And they're gonna get uh, a health tip about the apple. After they do, an organ and three fruits and vegetables, they get a short quiz. What did you just learn? When they pass the quiz, we give them a badge. And the goal is, you know, you get to unlock the next one to get the next badge, and their goal is to become magic health master. So their first badge is a top hat, then a wand, then a cape, and you become the magic health master. So very fun, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a subscription model and as John has mentioned, we're talking to big groups such as Children's Hospital in LA, Miami, and different places where they're using it in sports youth organizations where they're gonna use it as a fundraiser. So, you know, for the parents, it's great. They wanna give back to the hospitals for $4 a month. What they do is some of the proceeds go to the hospital, right, the other for us to build it, um, and it becomes very viral. 
So then after they do that, we have a bonus game. You know, we want to educate them first on, and this is for you know, 10 and under. Uh, we want to educate them first about the organs, but at the end of the day, we don't want them to think that their heart has big eyes and a smile and high tops. So at this point, now that they have the basics down, we have this game. And the kid is able to rotate this body in 360 degrees, and we ask them to drag and drop the organs into the correct spot. And we, we give them a little indication that it blinks. Once they do so, the game is not over. They now have to tap on that, and now for the first time, they're going to get a real representation of what that heart looks like. They can rotate it in 360 degrees, and when they hit expand, they get the split view. And now they have the different important parts of the heart. They have to click on that. They get to read about it, and when they close it, they get the green check mark. In order to pass, they have to click on all four areas. Once they're done, now the cartoon heart that was there turns into the real heart. So now they get that connection of what this real organ is about, where it is on their body, and then when they collect uh, all of them, we give them another badge. So gamifying, it's an important thing. Pass it back to John. Okay, so what you're about to see is something we've created when we want to go into the very deep measurements, not just an app that sits on the phone. So we have created a case, this does exist, and let's run the animation on this. And I'll show you what's happening to this. So this fits around the cell phone, it's actually not as thick as that. This here is, oh, I'm saying, I'm bring it back, yeah, in a bit fast, yeah. This here is a microphone, so you can actually hold it up to, up to your heart and measure the sound of the heart. And also you can measure breath from the lungs. As this is opening, let's stop it there. Let's go back, yeah, it's too quick. And that's why you got a Mac. Uh, pause there, right? So it'll run in a minute. These are electrodes. So if you wanted to do a hydration scanning, body fat, lean mass, you can do so. We're also measuring blood pressure, get your results, all the various tests, and you log in. The test that we're able to do on this, and I've just said that this moving forward, is blood pressure. Uh, whoa. And well, they know what it looks like anyway. So stop it there. The next one. Yeah. So this comes off. Um, and speaks, in, in, speaks to the phone through Bluetooth. So if you wanted to carry it separately, you could. And that's for the uh, EKG as well. Um, let's move that on. Now the idea of this is so if a person is really dealing with a particular problem, they can be doing their calorie tracking, they can be going and measuring their heart, lung, heart and lung function, they can get their body fat percent and hydration. They actually won't see this as their old way of measuring it, they'll actually get this through augmented reality. If I'm not, you just saw before, but we thought it'd be good to show it to you so you know it's coming. Color blindness test um, is important. We actually created our own screens and we're going to be converting this into augmented reality. The fact of the matter is, what do we really care about? My father was a driving instructor. He couldn't see red or green. <laughs> fact. So the only way he knew what to do is, what is that car next to me doing? Which is good, it avoided some accidents, but having people on the road who are, shall we call it, color insensitive, I and mean, how many children today in a school get a color blindness test? They don't. When I went to school, we did. We can also do on this vision acuity, so we can measure long and short sighted. This up here measures distance from the phone. So it will know, let's just move on to that if you guys there. It will know how far you are away from the screen, and you can do a test like this one here. <laughs> and see if a person has an issue of long and short sighted on the phone. Okay? 
So the idea here is we'll be bringing this out. It's actually going through development right now. Some of it will have to go through the FDA, some of it will not. And we'll be releasing this for those who want to go deeper than just the apps. This is an interesting one through the blood pressure. This cup operates all by itself. It doesn't have to be connected to the phone. So built into it is a battery and a Bluetooth connection. This is the EKG or body fat measurement. Over here you can see the results, those are real. Yep. Okay, so I think that's about it on that. Now this is a, a result from that case. What you're seeing here is the sound that came off your heart. I don't know if we can hear it or not. But also on there is the lungs. So we can separate those out. So if a person's getting bronchitis, they're getting some disease, their respiration rate increases or they're getting the flu, they'd be able to tell just by carrying the phone. Okay? So this is what the, the internals of the phone looks like. Uh, it's kind of fun. Here we have some uh, hearing devices that we're developing. They're not actually for hearing. They're measuring pulse ox through the earlobe. So they can give you your oxygen level and other things uh, through the ear, uh, including looking at hemoglobin A1C. Okay, last thing. We talked earlier on about bringing entertainment and healthcare together. Through the relationships that we have, we are very close to Universal Music Group. I don't know if any of you read the article recently that the next recession in this country could be caused by the lack of truck drivers. There are 400,000 drivers short today. Within three years, that could be two million. Why? Excess fat, high blood pressure, and all these diseases associated with excess fat. They have a very sedentary job. They're driving across the country. They're eating horrible food. Have you ever been to a truck stop and seen what's available? So we are about to release to the trucking community our app for measuring body fat. They want it on their phone. They don't want wearables. They want something they carry all the time. It's got to be convenient, easy to use, and understandable. They also have to have incentives. So we are about to announce that Universal have given us exclusive rights to a new box set coming out from Creedence Clearwater Revival. Some of you may know who they are. The younger ones probably don't. Which will be available to truck drivers if they use the app. We also have support of Lady Antebellum, Luke, Luke Bryan, a guy called Garth Brooks, who some of you may know, and all the major acts. The other issue that came up, 20% of drivers today are Latin. These artists don't mean anything to them. So we went back to Universal and said, who have you got? They gave us Louis Fonte, the biggest act in the world. <coughs> so we have the support. It's not costing us anything. And the drivers that use the app will have access to product from these artists. And they're not small artists. Which includes meet and greet. Front row seats, meet the artists before they go on stage. Signed memorabilia you can't get anywhere else. It's a major movement, and we're getting a lot of support. I think it's about it. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. <laughs> We've got a few seconds left. One thing we realized uh, in the company is that most people don't know what these things mean. So if a person goes to a doctor, they get a number, 120 over 80. What does that mean? I ask, what does systolic mean? What does diastolic mean? We will be showing this through augmented reality. So a person will be educated. What is cholesterol? What's good and what's bad? What is cancer? It's a scary one. What is it? Then you get down to the triglycerides and diabetes type 1 and type 2. We will be showing it. If you take an example of diabetes. Okay, so it's high blood, blood sugar. What if you had an image of a vein with razor blades coming through it? Will that impact you? Yes, it will. That's the type of thing we're doing. Okay? I think we're done. Thank you for your time.
Great presentation, John. Really excited to see your innovation come into the marketplace. Um, I work in, I'm a holistic health practitioner, so this is really exciting for me. And I'm, I'm definitely going to ask some questions during Q&A. We're going to open it up right now. If you have a question, raise your hand. John's going to walk around with the mic. Uh, let's save comments and storytelling for offline. I'm sure they'll be hanging out with us, so you guys can share that later. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. There's a question in the back. So it's a quantum back there. Uh, it's a quick presentation, John. <laughs> Great presentation. Thank you. What is there anything in particular that you would like us to help you with where you're at? Because it was a lot of information. It seems like you're developing some new technology. Is there anything that uh, you're looking from this group? We, we accept any input or suggestions. Um, yeah. the suggestions and input helps. So the, the old rule that the older you get, the less you're allowed to consume something is, in my case, not true. We believe in innovation, and we believe in pushing things forward. So if anyone has any suggestions or ideas, go for it. Hi, John. Um, my name is Donna Bink. Um, I really enjoyed your presentation because it combined two things that I love, um, kids and keeping them healthy. Um, I did want to ask if there is a way to make the specific app feature, the augmented reality feature, more sophisticated. Um, because you do have kids, um, you mentioned between 7 and 17, who are much more sophisticated than the kids of my generation or even your generation. Um, for example, I have a, a, about 10 cousins from the range of five all the way to 16. And when they're together, they're playing Minecraft, they're playing Fortnite, they're building architecture, cities, they're on a different level to where even I, I'm sorry, it confuses myself. So. I guess my suggestion or comment is make it more realistic, make it more graphic. Because mm -hmm. if you really want to have that impact, show them the fatty heart, show it, make it real as possible. Sorry, but thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, to answer that, if you, if you look at the body fact index, um, when you're actually seeing the real organs with the health information that comes with it, it's very impactful. Um, we will be gamifying that further. So there's one which is purely clinical and the next one will be the gamified version of those organs related to body fat and other conditions. So the idea is to educate. I don't know if you know the statistics, but an educated public reduces healthcare costs by up to 30%. So what you said is right, yes. Okay, okay. yeah, um, I was wondering what is your take on the restructuring of the education system in the US? Because while you're talking about all this, I was thinking about that a lot like, um, like the school system would be a perfect place to teach this and then um, like I tried to start a diet before and like I would have obligations at home that are like distracting me so so it's like a complex problem that involves multiple things we have uh, shown it to the head of education and curriculum at University of Southern California they said they want it we have shown it to the head of clinical trials and uh, the president of the West Coast of Tenant Health, which is the second largest uh, health system in the US. They want it. Uh, we, through the governor, uh, will be meeting with the uh, head of uh, education. The idea is to get it into schools. Uh, we, we've signed an agreement with a company called Wind Media. They service uh, South Central LA and the, what they call underserved. We're about to make them serve and putting it into schools, into their local sports teams and clubs. So anyone who wants it can have it, but we can customize it for their population. The idea is to get it out there and educate. When will it be available to us adults and will it be covered by health insurance? That we don't know yet. Uh, the cost of it is so low, we're not too concerned about that. Um, the health insurance companies would commence from the discussions with through the governor. They're gonna get back to us. Uh, we are working with uh, wellness providers, a company called Attentive Health, or employers. I don't know if most of you know this, but the cost of insurance on the direct insured is 30%. 70% goes out to the family members. So it's the children, the wives, husbands, partners. So we're, we're addressing that in particular. So the coloring app, which is about to come out in two weeks to three weeks, will be going to truck drivers, 
two employers <laughs> for their families and then we'll follow with the BFI probably in November. Okay. Over here. Hi, great presentation, a great app. Um, I know that your primary um, target is the phone, so I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, any future plans for porting the app to Apple wearables? No. Okay. And, <laughs> and, 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 and the second question is, how many people in this room have an Apple Watch? Raise your hand. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> To answer your question on Apple, if, if they came to us, we would obviously, but it's not a target right now. I'm just wondering, um, for those who, you know, enter in their daily food and activities on like things like my fitness pal or my plate, things, is that can that connect to your app? Does that have any impact on the app, or is it merely just what your weight is that will impact it? So you just change your weight as you go. We're about to develop. I'm going to go to a meeting this afternoon with a company called Calorie King. Have you heard of that? Uh, they've got a pretty good app. It was rated number two of all the apps above my fitness pal. Okay. Um, we will probably end up owning that and integrating. Okay. So, yes. John, uh, thank you for your presentation. Can you tell us about your company? You were founded in 1998, but are you private? Are you public? Uh, uh, where are you in the evolution of uh, this corporate entity? We are private. Um, we have two offices. Uh, one is the State Healthy Office in Monrovia and the Augmenti Office, which is somewhere near on the coast. Don't like going there, it's too long. <laughs> Encino. Most of our developers um, are in Encino. In Monrovia, we have our engineering and research staff. So, the head, for example, the head of our, our clinical research is Dr. Colin Hill. Dr. Colin Hill, is, his CV is so long, it's ridiculous. Uh, he's a 35 year tenured um, professor at the University of Southern California. He started his work at CERN in Switzerland, so you know his specialty is radiation and oncology. I believe Hannah, who's here, met with him. He's very impressive. And our uh, second in research is David, Dr. David Ursic. We hired him because he's from New Zealand. Uh, but he has uh, got his PhD at, at, at USC as well. So. A lot of focus on that. Two more questions. Yeah. Uh, hi. Um, so my understanding that you can be a thin person, not o technically overweight, and still have a high BFI. How are you planning to address that, engage folks who don't, who might not necessarily think that they need an app like this or intervention tools like this, and yet have high BFI? Let me respond to that. Um, we had one of our developers. He was a young man. He was uh, six foot. <coughs> He weighed 170 pounds, his body fat percent was 38 percent. Why? Because he sat on the backside all day just doing programming and didn't exercise. Uh, he was about to get into serious trouble. The thin obese or thin overweight is a big problem because people don't know, particularly today with that lifestyle. So with our apps and with the case, we will be measuring and we will be identifying those and helping them. The idea is to help, but it is a problem. Last question, over here. Um, this is a rather difficult technical question. Um, from my research and years of experience working in the field of health and fitness and being on the front lines of waging the war on body fat because I primarily work as a personal trainer and 99% of my clients just want to look better naked and that means losing body fat, building muscle mass and all that good stuff. Um, so when it comes to caloric expenditure, and weight loss. I think it's really important to look at metrics that distinguish between fat oxidation versus uh, glycogen oxidation versus muscle tissue oxidation. Are you looking at any of those, any of that deeper data and integrating it into your app or are you just looking at calorie expenditure in general? We, our, our results are is it based on VO2 max. Gotcha, so you're doing calorimetry. Right. Gotcha. So that's, that's the focus. So you're using RQ data? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. And as far as the activity goes back to magnitude, and for those of you who are here, look, I'm not going to go too deep on this, but the company will not release anything that has not a background in clinical validity. Mm. Dr. Hill wouldn't allow it, and the FDA won't. And also on the engineering side, we have what's called the ISO standard. Our shop, our offices are all ISO qualified. Okay. So we live within very strict development standards, or we won't do it. Okay. 
Yeah, and also lastly, are you looking at one? What's that? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll wrap up with this. Uh, are you looking at um, uh, EPOC at all in terms of exercise intensity? Yes. Oh wow. Okay. Excellent. Yes, you, guys, you guys are sitting pretty good. What we what we've been doing right now, and again, I wasn't going to announce this, but you asked the question. Uh, we're we're able to through the activity app measure intensity. Mm -hmm. So we're also going to be coming out with a, a development to it. So we, we release it and we keep on bringing improvements. But one of them is, are you doing the exercise correctly? Mm -hmm. And it will know. What type of exercise are you doing? What is your profile? How many calories and how much energy is it required? So the intensity, yes. Excellent. OK, very good. Uh, and lastly, is the, is the app available for download just yet? Not for you. OK. <laughs> Come on, B2B2C, man, B2B2C. Fitness professionals need a tool, need a tool. Um, all right, well, thank you, John, so much for a great presentation. And uh, great.